Dr. Baliga here. This podcast belongs to a set of 10 podcasts on the topic of geriatrics. It's from an outstanding chapter on geriatrics in Baliga's textbook on internal medicine available at www.mastermedfacts.com. It, it covers important topics including functional decline and frailty, cognitive impairment and dementia, evaluation of cognitively impaired elderly driver, depression in late life, hearing impairment, vision impairment, urinary incontinence, undernutrition, pharmacotherapeutic considerations in the elderly, including pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, elder abuse and neglect, goals of care and advanced directives, and prognostication. After listening to these 10 podcasts, you should have a solid foundation in geriatrics and should help you provide better care to your senior citizen patients. This chapter is authored by Dr. Jedet Ross, MD, who's professor at the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio. She is the Associate Program Director for Geriatric Fellowship and Director of Didactic Activities for Palliative Care and Geriatric Fellows. Her academic interests include integrating geriatric palliative care content into educational programs at the undergraduate and the graduate medical educational levels. The senior author is Dr. Eric Widera, MD, who is Professor of Clinical Medicine in the Division of Geriatrics at the University of California, San Francisco, UCSF. He is also the Associate Program Director for Geriatrics. His main goal is to improve the care provided to elderly patients with severe chronic and or terminal conditions through program development and educational interventions. Multiple choice question. A 73 year old woman comes to your office as a new patient. She has high blood pressure, dyslipidemia, type 2 diabetes and degenerative joint disease. Her medications include acetaminophen 325 milligrams with combined with hydrocodone 5 milligrams, one to two tablets orally every four hours, vitamin B12, metoprolol tartrate 25 milligrams twice daily, NPH insulin 25 units subcutaneous twice daily, atorvastatin 40 milligrams oral once daily and aspirin 325 milligrams orally daily. She's complaining of pain in her joints that she rates as a 7 by 10. When reviewing her medication bottles, you notice that she has not refilled several of her medications in three months and there are still a good number of pills in, in those bottles. She admits that even though she's in pain, she does not take her pain medication very often. What options can you provide her to improve her compliance with her medication regimen? A. Switch blood pressure and insulin regimen to an extended release dosage form formulation. B. Have a discussion with her about her feelings towards the medication. C. Ask if she is having any difficulty purchasing medications. D, A and C only, and E, options A, B, and C. And the answer is E. In the case presented, the patient has a complex medication regimen typical of a person with multiple comorbidities. This person has a high ill burden and changing some of the medications to extended release formulations will considerably reduce the amount of pills to be taken in a day. It is important to discuss 
a person's feeling towards the medication. It is not unusual that despite having been in pain, some patients do not take their pain medication for fear of becoming addicted to the pain medication. Some medications are costly and the patient may not be taking the prescribed amount because they cannot afford them. Pharmacotherapeutic considerations in the elderly. Medications play a critical role in maintaining the health of older adults. Older adults disproportionately use prescription medications despite accounting for only 30% of the US population seniors purchase 33% of all prescription drugs and annually fill on an average of 20 prescriptions. Older adults can be susceptible to side effects of medications, so it is important to carefully select medications known to be safe in elders. The high prevalence of multiple comorbid conditions leads to complex medication regimen that puts older adults at risk for polypharmacy, non-adherence problems, and adverse reactions. Pharmacokinetics. The pharmacokinetics of medications are influenced in the elderly by several factors, including acute and chronic illness, concomitant medications, nutritional status, loss of organ reserve, and the changes to absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Older adults produce less gastric acid and have diminished gastrointestinal motility, which leads to a slower rate but usual extent of absorption of medications. Aging also commonly results in decreased total body water and an increase in the fat to total body water ratio. Therefore, the distribution of medications changes depending on the water solubility of medications, the volume of distribution of water soluble drugs like digoxin and lithium is decreased, leading to a higher peak concentration. The volume of distribution of lipid soluble drugs like diazepam is increased, leading to prolonged half-lives and duration of action. Older adults have decreased liver function as a consequence of decreased liver mass, decreased hepatic blood flow, and decreased enzyme activity. Hence, the metabolism of drugs in the liver is reduced. Drugs undergoing extensive first-pass metabolism, such as propranolol and libitolol, will have de increased systemic bioavailability and plasma concentrations. Conversely, medications that are pro-drugs and require activation in the liver, like several ACE inhibitors, such as inolapril, and perindopril may have decreased bioavailability. Aging can lead to decreased renal blood flow, decreased glomerular filtration rate, and decreased renal mass, and therefore decreased renal function. The elimination of medications with high renal elimination, like some antibiotics, is diminished. The renal function, as calculated, by the creatinine clearance should be determined for older adults and medications should be re renally dosed if applicable. Pharmacodynamics Multiple chronic disease states and altered receptor effects lead to altered pharmacodynamic effects in older adults. Therefore, the effect of drugs is less predictable and responses to drugs may be altered. Older adults have increased central nervous system sensitivity, leading to stronger and longer lasting effects of centrally acting medications, such as benzodiazepines, that can lead to prolonged sedation. Similarly, older adults have increased anticholinergic system sensitivity, and this is why Drugs with anticholinergic properties like the first-generation 
antihistamines lead to cognitive impairment, vision changes, urinary retention, constipation and dry mouth. Older adults have decreased sympathetic responses which do not allow them to properly trigger a response to situations like hypoglycemia. Lastly, blunted responses to the baroreceptor reflex leave older adults unable to appropriately react in response to low blood pressure and leaving them susceptible to the effect of cardiovascular medications. When prescribing medications to older adults, it is important to start with lower doses and slowly titrate until the desired effect is achieved or an adverse drug event occurs. Strategies for appropriate prescribing in the elderly. It is essential to obtain a medication history which includes asking about previous adverse drug events including side effects, allergies, drug-drug interactions and drug-disease interactions and illicit drug use. Clinicians should perform a brown bag review by first asking patients to bring to the office visit all the prescription and over-the-counter medications, nutritional supplements and herbal preparations that they are taking. Next, the provider should ask the patient and or their caregiver how the medications are taken, the indications of their medications, the pharmacies used to fill them and the healthcare providers that prescribe them. There are many medications that are potentially inappropriate for using in older adults. There are several tools to assist in the identification and avoidance of potentially inappropriate medications including BRS criteria, screening tool to alert doctors to the right treatment like START, S-T-A-R-T, and screening tool of older persons potentially inappropriate prescriptions goes by the acronym STOPP, S-T-O-P-P. This podcast is derived from an outstanding chapter on geriatrics in Baliga's textbook of internal medicine, available at www.mastermedfacts.com. It's authored by Dr. Janet Ross, MD, professor at the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio. She is also the Associate Program Director for Geriatric fellowship. Her academic interests include integrating geriatric palliative care content into educational programs at the undergraduate and graduate medical education levels. Her main interests include advanced communication skills, goals of care, pain management and management of falls in the elderly. Her clinical activities are based in the South Texas VA healthcare system where she is a staff physician within the geriatrics department and extended care services. And she is affiliated with the Geriatric Research, Education and Clinical Center. She works in the Geriatrics and Palliative Care Consultation Service and the Geriatrics Clinic. Dr. Eric Widera, MD, is Professor of Clinical Medicine in the Division of Geriatrics at UCSF that is the University of California, San Francisco. He's also the Associate Program Director for Geriatrics. His main goal is to improve the care provided to elderly patients with severe chronic and or terminal conditions through program development and educational innovations. Dr. Widera accomplishes this through various leadership roles, including Director of the Hospice and Palliative Care Service at San Francisco VA Medical Center, and he's the Program Director for the Geriatric Fellowship at UCSF. He has been the recipient of numerous grants and awards, including a Geriatric Academic Center Award at the the Hastings Center Cunniff Dixon Physician Award and the Hartford Foundation as a Center of Excellence Faculty Scholar Award.